the boogeyman arrives, the 2023 Lagos gubernatorial election. The elections of 2023 has come and gone. The last of the elections was the Lagos gubernatorial elections. Lagos is, of course, the first federal capital of independent Nigeria, and on the hills of a rural to urban drift that reached its crescendo in the oil boom of the 70s, people of many ethnic origins within Nigeria and even from outside trooped to Lagos. In the kind of exodus that has been replicated many times in history in the world's greatest cap cities. It is as if Lagos had issued an open invitation to a great unending feast. And it has indeed been a wonderful host in its liberality, eschewing in its social, commercial, and political life the worst aspects of parochialism that has hobbled the nation as a whole since its birth. In the last elections, it seems to a new phantom, a bogeyman, if the political tale bearers are to be believed, has arrived after a few years stiltily sticking its toe in, inch by inch. One of the guests has become an invader, seeking to drive out the indigents of the home. Lance Morrow, the one-time editor of Time magazine and preeminent columnist, warned us long ago that the secret of much evil doing is the ability of man to treat his fellow not as a human being like himself, but as the other. In other words, to do evil, we must first dehumanize the other human being. Otherwise, evil is impossible. Throughout history, this has been the case. The Jew had to be rampantly evil, heartless and greedy for the Holocaust to be justified. The gypsies had to be dirty, deceitful, and lazy nuisances for robbers to be more welcome than them. The Hutu had to be different from the Tutsi to justify genocide in Rwanda. All this find resonance in the early years of our independence, in the history our nation wants to remain in amnesia about. But this was never so in Lagos. Lagos is the place, to paraphrase the Brazilian novelist Paulo Coelho, where it was possible to walk in the streets and mistake the approaching stranger for your brother. But this bogeyman has arrived in the politics of Lagos and will, without question, work strong for a while. Still, we must hope that all men of good will, re will recognize that the bogeyman is just a phantom. It has no substance. OK. So let me start. For those that don't know what a bogeyman is, I yeah. think because yeah. I mean, yeah. who is well, the bogeyman? That, who is this bogeyman? So the bogeyman is a, a kind of mischievous spirit. Okay. Uh, in fables, we used to frighten children. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in this context, the we are frightened. Man. We are being frightened by the the bogey of of tribalism. Mm. We are being corralled. Oh, he. He wants to take over my land. He wants to drive me away from my land. So let's call it what it is. We're in Lagos. They yeah. say the Igbo man. Uh, wants to take over. The Igbo man so, wants to come and take everything so, from the Yoruba yeah, man, including his land. That's yeah, the rhetoric yeah, so, that so, has so, been. So, doing. so the that, that's a kind of fable because you and I know. How do you do that? We know it's not true. It's not true. We know it's not true. But you can say it to children. Children will believe mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's a fable they tell to. I, to people who ought, should know better, mm -hmm. but they don't know. They don't know that it's untrue. Now, let, I, start, I start with a preamble, you know. Our constitution, our constitution in the qualifications for who should be the governor of a state does not provide for indigents. That's the truth. Go, if you go and read the qualifications for being a governor, say, of Lagos State, mm -hmm. It does not have in it that you must be an indigent of Lagos State. This is the truth. All it says is you must be a citizen of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what it means is that I, 
I am from Edo State, mm -hmm. I could I could go to Sokoto State and contest for elections. That is really what it should be. It doesn't matter where I am from. So we were in these elections, these campaigns were based on a moot argument, some, something that, in fact, we were discussing on real things. Some campaigns were based on unreal things. Because the truth is that even if I'm Igbo, I can contest in Lagos for governorship of Lagos State. Even if I am Hausa, I can do the same in Akwaibom, in Cross River. That is what the framers of our constitution did. In that, they were very mature and forward-looking. There's no, in our constitution, definition of indigenous of any state. Uh, the Senate, our Senate, uh, under one of the contestants now, Senator Omoa Agege and, and his uh, committee, did in 2020 try to uh, um, propose an amendment of our constitution to include such, such a, um, um, a provision for indigenship mm -hmm. um, so that then you would have to go to your local gov the local government in your state if you had paid tax for 10 years or so and all that mm -hmm. you, you could then uh, get a certificate of indigenship and all that but the makers of our constitution didn't go to that these levels so it, it's like we are like they say sometimes engaging in democratic or constitutional backtracking we are going back to do mm -hmm. in the it is thankfully no do that uh, provision has not come to light. It has to go through all the uh, to, uh, roundabout, roundabout uh, all the state house of assemblies. So, Stephen, it's, you're, you're a very sweet idealist. <laughs> <laughs> and a lawyer, too, which I'm surprised that you're such an idealist. Uh, that you're but this idealist. is our. The, the, the you makers are very the makers sweet, of our, sweet. The makers idealist. of our constitution are idealists. So, there's two things I would yes. say to that. One, in that I can't mm. remember which state it is, but there is mm. a, a governor who just won who is a Yoruba man in yeah. a non Yoruba state, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I think is a brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, when we are still filling out forms and still saying where you're from, yeah. like yeah. I still have to say I'm from Bielsa State. Do you understand? Mm. But meanwhile, really, mm. have I ever lived in Bielsa State? Mm. I've never lived in Bielsa exactly. State. I've been there many times, exactly. but and my name is clearly from that side. But mm. I'm a Lagosian. Mm -hmm. Second is probably a, a Potakot babe. <laughs> that, that, that's it. So we still have the basic forms. That say that why do they need to why do we need to put that? Mm -hmm. So it's still very much inbuilt into our system of yeah. where are you from? Mm. And you have to put that on actual documentation. Mm -hmm. So until we're able to even remove that, you know, it, it surprises me that you don't have to, to be honest, that you don't have to be from the state that you're from to run, for, which is mm. brilliant. I think that's excellent. I don't think it should be like that. I think it should be the, the best man or woman for the job. For the job. You know, who can get us what we need? Let's put them there. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't matter um, where they're from. Yes, they should have not just come into Lagos like yesterday and then be running for governor of Lagos. You yeah. have to show them that you've cared about the place exactly. where, where you are you living, where you're the, staying. The you've, you've worked with the grassroots. Yeah. You've put out into the community. You've done the work. That's, that is what would qualify you to run, not whether you're from that state or not. It's how have you committed to giving back to mm -hmm. that place where you live, to the people where you live, to the system where you live, to say that you think, because it's very much an ego thing, you think that you can stand here and run this state. Mm. So you have to prove what you've done, not where you're from. True. And I think that's the low level conversation that we always keep having. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just pretty low, you know, um, where you literally I think like how they did that, you know, voter segmentation, people who vote based on this, based on that, you know, religion, there's ethnicity, there is, is intelligent, mm -hmm. there is, is it my own person, you know, and things like that. And you see that. Oftentimes, how we make decisions, right, it's we don't have 
quality of depth in our thinking process, mm -hmm. right? We just make very shallow decisions. And like Jan said, you know, what is where are you from? What has that got to do with your pedigree, right? What has that got to do with your track record? So we want to look at your track record. Have you done granular work that can be verified, that is trackable with evidence, success? You can show traction, right? You know, I mean, when VCs want to invest in a startup, because I play in that space, they will ask you, What's, where's your traction? Do you have traction? Okay, so if you don't have traction, they're not going to want to talk with you. So they don't say, oh, wait, are you building an Igbo startup or Yoruba startup? They won't ask you that, mm. you know. They will yeah. say, what's your traction? They will fund it. If your traction is good, they will fund it, right? If Netflix wants to hire, they will say, oh, are you, are you Dubai? Are you from Kenya? You're good. You can do this work. That's it. So I think really we need to just change all of this orientation and begin to look at what really matters. I think it's super important. You, you, you see, what I think, okay, first of all, uh, constitutional drafters have to be, and our constitutional drafters who are, who are they, they have to be idealists for the future because you, you never, you, you want to build a nation, you are aspirational. But the drafters of the American Constitution, which you copied now, for instance, they didn't sit imagining that America will always be in the 18th century. Mm. They imagined that down the line, America will progress. Our constitutional drafters did the same. They imagined we will progress. But I agree with you. There's something beneath the Constitution. Like I said, laws can't implement themselves. There's nothing, something beneath the Constitution that is not working. The Constitution doesn't hang there by itself. It can't implement itself. There's something beneath it that is not working. And that's where I say we, that is an agreement between our, that there's no agreement between our ruling elite classes about whether Nigeria should move forward. You see, I say to people, Nigeria is many Nigerias. Mm. You go to Sokoto, they say Nigeria. You go to Akwa Ibom, they say Nigeria. You go to, you come to Lagos, they say Nigeria. It's not necessarily one uniform, as in many places. But to make one Nigeria, you would have to have the most important people want it to be so. Just to, as we were saying about education, if you really want Nigeria educated, you have to want the people who matter to want it like that. So what you had in America, you had people like that who sat down and wanted progress. We need to have people in our ruling classes sitting down across the Niger to decide Nigeria must progress. That's what we have not had. Mm. All right. Um, the end always seems to come too soon here on The Advocate. I trust you enjoyed today's show. However, The Advocate continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa with the hashtag The Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. You can catch up with our previous podcast by going to plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocate NG. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till you next week, same time on this station. Let us keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now.